Okay, I think I'm ready. I got my, I got my coffee. I got my cat. Hello, everybody. Jordan here. The PH is silent, and today we're going to talk about four resources that are on the DMs Guild that will help you with a Forgotten Realms uh, type game. So let's let's look at them. First though, we should talk about uh, the DMs Herald programs. DMs Guild, they're trying to get the word out about uh, certain PDFs or, or just good content that they have on their website. And they reached out to a few of us, myself included. So I'm now technically a DMs Herald. I still am trying to figure out what that means. I think what I'm able to do is directly talk to certain people at the DMs Guild that can recommend like really, like recommend kind of the, the tip of the top to me. So I know what to review and go after. Um, I'll be honest, I get sent a lot of stuff. And so this way to have somebody to like filter it for me would be really nice. These were not recommended by the DMs Guild. Uh, they were just ones that I really enjoyed and wanted to talk about specifically kind of focused on the realms. I will also say there are affiliate links down below. Um, you can use those to purchase any of these things or just about anything uh, you want on the DMs Guild. And a little bit comes back my way, which is really nice. But for you, because of the DMs Herald program, I have a coupon code for you. So you can save 5% off of $5 or more by using coupon code HeraldJorfton5. Uh, so feel free to use that. And I don't think that expires anytime soon, maybe in January, 2022, or maybe we'll get uh, an updated one by then. Who knows? But for right now, check it out, save some money. That's awesome. Okay, the four PDFs we're gonna talk about, I'll try to put timestamps in the description as well. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Border Kingdoms, we're gonna talk about the Kalimshan Adventures Guide, the Rashomon Campaign Guide, and Darkhold Secrets of the Zentarum. Um, all of these, really, really fun. Specifically, the Border Kingdoms you can get in hardcover or softcover. I bought it in softcover. Uh, and Rashomon, I thought I bought in softcover, but I couldn't find it, so maybe I didn't, and I'll have to uh, pr purchase this again. Or sometimes the DMs Guild is a little, like, I mean, shipping delays and stuff. It could be that. I just need to, I need to go look through my emails. But starting off with the Border Kingdoms, this is going to run you $15. It is a 129-page supplement, but written by uh, Ed Greenwood and Alex uh, Cammer. Alex Cammer. Now, Alex is a really cool guy, and he kind of reached out to me to talk about this as well because he knows the content that I produce. Now, what are the Border Kingdoms? It's a very specific part of the realms that is just uh, north of Shar, I believe, or the Shar, I believe. So here are the Border Kingdoms, and this was just something that uh, Ed Greenwood wanted to, I guess, like flesh out and just write some more things about the realms. So if we go over here, we've got, uh, uh, this is really a DM's resource, I should say. Um, but it's kind of fun that uh, the father of the Forgotten Realms was able to expand and write in it. Um, and it's really cool. Like if you wanted to run a Border Kingdom centric campaign, this is a great supplement for that. And I also think that if you wanted to run a Forgotten Realms game that is disconnected from the Sword Coast, uh, this could be a lot of fun. Like maybe your players really like the Forgotten Realms, but they're tired of the same three cities over and over again. This is a different area and it's a lot of fun. So they have this, it's mostly just one giant chapter one, if let's be honest, which is all of the different areas that you can visit within uh, the Border Kingdoms. Yeah, here we go. So this is the Border Kingdoms. We have the Lake of Steam up here and the Shard down below. And then he, uh, he just, they just went through and made, uh, like just defined all of this. So all of these little spots you can go to, um, they all have information and forts and, and the people and the population and stuff. So it's super fun. I think this would be a fun area to uh, visit on a longer campaign of the Forgotten Realms, or it would could be um, a really good starting position to kind of like, this is where you were raised. Tamebrol Bold. Uh, once a larger place, but raided so often in the past by goblins emerging from a local mine that only a few hardy folks still live here amid many empty abandoned houses. So you have a little bit about it uh, and information and then like some plot stuff. It's kind of neat. 
Now going through and reading all of these doesn't really make for interesting YouTube videos, but uh, I guarantee that it's really cool information and lots of fun little tidbits that uh, really make the world feel lived in. So if you like the realms and you wanna play in the realms, this is a fun resource. Also now in chap chapter two, these are possible uh, ar or campaign arcs or just um, hooks for your players to kind of go through. Things that might be happening within the border kingdoms. Um, and then in chapter three, we have backgrounds. What I like about backgrounds, I know that you can create your own, but I like supplements that offer backgrounds because specifically if I'm going to be running a border kingdoms game, my players show up with their characters and then I have these backgrounds that they can pick from. And then they get a sense of like, oh, I'm from this place rather than I built my character and now I'm just like a video game dropping in and going. And this is a good way of making them feel like they're from the area, which also gives them a reason to kind of band together. Um, and then here are some hidden items, which is basically kind of like trinkets, but there are a few of these that could be considered magic items, I suppose. But just like found in dungeons and found certain places makes it makes it just a more fleshed out area. So again, like I like this. I thought it was really fun. I don't know if I will use it immediately, but it's one of those things that I like to have in my back pocket for when my players do venture over to that part of the realms. Up next is the Callum Shan Adventures Guide from M.T. Black. He makes really good stuff. I believe this is a DM's uh, uh, Elite or something. I don't know. They, uh, Adept. The Adept program. I believe that was what this is because he's got a yellow DM's Guild uh, a, a ampersand on here. And this is just another area of the realms. So we were over here in the Border Kingdoms. Well, lo and behold, Callum Shan is just yonder over here. So this resource costs $8. It is only available in PDF. Uh, it is 67 pages, but really does a, a great job of capturing Kalimshan, what makes Kalimshan different from the rest, rest of the Forgotten Realms, and how to utilize it. So let's dive in. Um, you're going to get some new races, some new backgrounds, uh, some classes on like how does a how does a regular class fit into the world of Kalimshan, and some custom classes, subclass options, I should say. Uh, and then chapter two is a history of Kalimshan and geography in the cities and towns. Uh, you, If you're unfamiliar with Kalimshan, this is a great resource, uh, or a, this is just a really good capture of the world of Kalimshan. But now I wanted to say that the author actually went through, and here is a bunch of uh, other supplements from years past that inspired and helped with this supplement. So he he did his research, and that way the history, geography, and the politics, and the food, and the clothing, some of this is left up to uh, whatever he wants to write about the realms, but uh, it's really awesome, and it's really captured well, and I feel like you can use this um, at, a, at a glance. So you don't have to go through and read every single one of these different supplements to run um, like two weeks in Calimport. I believe I said custom races, but I think that is from a later supplement, and I'm confusing the two, so let's not think about that. But this is how do you fit into Kalimshan. Um, and I like that the backgrounds have a way for you to fit in. So if I choose the criminal background, um, I know that I can, uh, this is how my criminal background fits in with Kalimshan. Um, if I am a gladiator, this is how my gladiator background fits into Kalimshan. This is how my character can work within the confines of this. And your class is the same thing. How does the class fit in? How does uh, a cleric and a fighter, how are they viewed in this world? And that's where we get down to like warlocks. And sorcerers and warlocks are very distrusted in Kalimshan um, because magic that doesn't come with uh, training and a cost is not very, uh, it's not looked highly upon. Subclass options are Circle of Stone, which is kind of like a desert sand druid, which is kind of fun. Uh, these are a little bit older, so you might uh, tweak things here and there if you really want to, but they're fun. Uh, Way of the Desert Wind for Monk, uh, Oath of the Yanisir, Yanisar, um, and then Wayfinder, which is a ranger of the desert. And I've always really liked desert rangers for some reason. I just think they're like fun, and this whole garb is really cool. So, a uh, concise yet detailed history of Kalimshan um, and the geography of, of Kalimshan, so you can uh, muddle your way through if they ask too many questions, kind of a thing. 
Um, things that are important to Kalimshan are like the economy. Uh, and I like that that this is taken into account. So I get it. Account. Uh, I don't even try. They just these jokes just happen. Um, and then specifically Kalimport, the city of glory. There's a lot of information here on uh, the different wards that you can go to NPCs that you're going to run into. Uh, there's a map here of all the different places that you can go and explore. Um, I like that because anytime a city like this, I could take this city and plop it in a bunch of other different places too. Uh, not with the same players, obviously, but like if I'm running my other random one and I needed a cool desert bazaar city, like this is a great resource to have. What makes a Callum Shan adventure different from the other adventures in the realms? Um, and he went through and did tier one adventures, tier two adventures, tier three and tier four. So depending on how high level your players are, you, when they come to Callum Shan or Callum Port, you can kind of look at these and say like, okay, I'm going to do this like blood in the sand kind of quest. That seems fun for my level three adventurers all the way to, uh, tier four where you're like, oh yeah, we're going to do the flying fortress, which this should be a lot of fun for my level 17 players to figure out. Now these aren't full adventures, but they are, uh, that inspiration, you know, where you look at that and you're like, oh my gosh, I could, we could do a whole thing about this. So you drop a couple of these rumors, your players latch onto one of them, and then all of a sudden you've created a whole campaign out of it. I liked this a lot too, uh, in Counter Tables. These are the monsters of 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, and he takes them and then re, uh, or, or put them appropriately into columns of their specific tier so you can roll random encounters for your party. So this would be desert encounters, but if we keep going down, we have forest and mountain encounters, uh, plains encounters, swamp encounters, and then there's some custom monsters that they created for this. Uh, lots of fun here. So, And then this also comes with a fun map of Kalim Shen at the end. I like this a lot. Um, up next is Reshman, the campaign guy. This was written by a whole bunch of really cool people. Um, Ed Greenwood again is in this. Brian Holmes, uh, he's awesome. I recognize him. Um, and a couple of other people that I, I see their names around. Um, lots of really awesome people worked on this. This is a $20 PDF, which is a little spendy, but I think you're getting um, some awesome stuff. And honestly, it's totally worth $35 to get a soft cover print of it. So if you're doing that and you're getting the PDF as well, like I, I would automatically kind of just go for this one. Uh, but that is me. Now there is a high res and a low res with this. The high res is awesome. I'm noticing that it uh, chugs along when I'm trying to go through multiple pages. So I am using the low res, but know that a lot of these pictures, if you don't think they look up to snuff, um, there is a high res version as long as, uh, as well as two printer friendly versions. This came out within the last two or three months, I believe. Um, so it's fairly new. Uh, we have, but I believe it was worked on and it came out before Van Richten's Guide. So with Van Richten's Guide, we had uh, the lineage system, which gave us kind of like a hag spawn. But if you look here, we have a hag spawn as a race option. So uh, take that as you will. You could probably combine a lot of the spiritual spooky stuff from Van Richten's Guide and incorporate it in here if you wanted to. And I almost forgot, where is this place? Well, we're gonna go, we were all the way down here in uh, Kalimshan, but we're gonna move all the way up to Thay, and then uh, Rashman is just north of Thay up here. Um, there are information on how the classes fit in, as well as some subclasses for these, and then a whole new class called the Witchlerian. Uh, new backgrounds, which I, again, have stated before, I really like backgrounds because they instantly allow my player to fit into the world. Um, feats and new spells and uh, spells for the Witch Larian uh, from the existing spell list that we have. Uh, maps, various country, we got a history of the area, factions, which is really interesting because uh, deities are very important to Rashman, and so uh, having these different organizations worshiping these different deities is kind of good. Good information to have. Um, and then items of interest, and then a whole bunch of creatures to fight and NPC characters. Uh, with the classes, we have a new subclass for the Artificer, Barbarian, Bard, Paladin, Ranger, Sorcerer, Warlock, Wizard, and then the new class, which is the Witch Larian. 
Um, the barbarian path of the rune scar is kind of interesting because their bodies are infused with magic uh, to be a, a living weapon. And I, I thought this was interesting. So they get a lot of cool things like they actually get spells and how that works with the rage mechanic is, uh, I don't know. I like things like that and like reckless magic. Like this is kind of interesting. I like that. College of Apparitions is uh, a little, I mean, this is, this is good. Don't get me wrong. But like, I think I wouldn't play the College of Whispers before this. Uh, or I think there was like a spooky bard, but I could be wrong. Anyway, good option to have if you're playing this specific game. How do druids and clerics fight? Uh, clerics, especially the Rashmen are very spiritual. And so, uh, I, I would want to play a cleric. I think, um, I'm a big fan of Gish fighters, the spell casting sword wielding fighters. And so, uh, Ramathari Mathari battle mage, we'll just say battle mage for now. Cause I'm terrible at pronunciation. Uh, I really like this. I like the whole aesthetic of this. Um, and it's a sorcerer that uses a blade. So a uh, sorcerer subclass, but I really like this. You get extra attack and some sword focusing, uh, not spells, but just like combat things. Um, really fun. I would love to play this in all honesty. I think this is a really cool subclass. Um, mostly because I want to be that like mage magic wielding, uh, Sorcerer, which I know the Blade Singer exists, but I kind of feel like the Blade Singer should have been a. Uh, I want the Eldritch Knight to be better, and this is kind of like the Eldritch Knight that I think I'm looking for. So, the Witch Larian are the. This is the new class that comes with this supplement, um, and they're the spiritual leader people of uh, the Rashman people, and that. Le leads itself to you could play this custom class which is a um a, a spell caster class that kind of relies on the idea of the spirits in the the forest and nature and not not, not necessarily druidish but like that there's uh, an ancient uh spiritual like magic that's tied to the land kind of a thing uh but what I like about this is, I mean, it's a fine, it's a fine class and you can play this just as you want, but there's a little tidbit here that says like other ways to play this and that you could be a Eldritch Knight fighter and call yourself this Witch Larian because you are the spiritual leader of your group and that manifests in the limited magic that you could do. Um, it even suggests that you could take the magic initiate feat. Uh, and I like that as well. So you don't necessarily, if you wanted to have all of your players be the like which Larian tribe members and have them come together to take on Fey, um, this could be a good way to do it. And you don't necessarily have to play that class. It's more of an idea. Um, again, backgrounds are really fun. How do you fit into this world? I like this a lot. Um, and then how do the standard backgrounds fit into the world? I also really enjoy that. Um, new feats. Uh, I really like the elemental summoning stuff. I think that's fun. Um, and new spells. So here are the fun spells. The yes, Moonblade is what I wanted to talk about. So uh, again, with my my Gish characters, I was a big fan of the Shadow Blade, and I, I built a lot of uh, I built a lot of characters trying to figure out how to make that worthwhile. And I never really figured it out. And I probably would have the same problem with this spell, but I really I really like it. So it's the opposite of a Shadow Blade. It's a a uh, blade of of light of moonlight that does radiant damage. It's kind of like having a sun blade uh, that you can summon whenever you want. Uh, but I like it. It's it's just fun, and I really enjoy that you you deal three d eight radiant damage, but it does two d eight more to undead. So in the right situation, this is fun, uh, and I just love this art. I think this is really cool. Bunch of information on the lands, uh, maps. Uh, what is going on with the population of certain areas and, and things like that, the history of certain areas. So again, this is really good as you're traversing through to uh, understand the NPCs and what their, their role is here and what's going on. Um, I love it. Apparently there's a lake monster. That's really cool. Here are all the cool people that contributed on this. So you guys are awesome. You made a good product. Uh, last but not least, Darkhold Secrets of the Zentarum, uh, Justice Armin, MT Black, Anthony Joyce, Celeste Conowich, lots of really cool people worked on this, Ed Greenwood as well. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the Zentarum are the, uh, the quote, evil faction of the Forgotten Realms. Uh, it, but as time has moved on, they have been less um, 
uh, I guess they're still evil in a way, but like they're not super villainous because player characters can join that faction. Uh, anyway, it's a cool detailed history of the Zentarum. This is a really excellent supplement. I know I've said that about a lot, but I really did save the best for last. This one is really cool. Table of contents, we have using the book. Chapter one, we have character options, which is your, uh, how do you connect with the Zentarum, your subclass and your feats. Um, a history of the Zentarum themselves. Really cool thing about Thieves' Cant that we're going to talk about. Uh, then we have the Sunset Vale, which is the area that your your Zentarum area is going to be in. Uh, Darkhold, Has Darkhold Castle, for example. Um, we have a really cool map of Darkhold and some information about that. And then some information on running evil campaigns, which I really like. New magic item, new spells, and uh, some new monsters. So what we're going to do is start right over here with character options. This is fun because instead of backgrounds, you're getting um, how do you kind of like we're going to add on to your background with this. So how do you fit into the criminal world of the Zentarum? Um, and then we get into some subclasses. We have the Cleric Strife Domain. We have the Rogue Spell Thief, which is something that I've always wanted to play. I know that the uh, Arcane Trickster Rogue can steal spells at like really high level, but this is a level three ability. And I really would love to play this Spell Thief. I, l I love the idea of a rogue that can um, steal magic from people. Uh, Sorcerer Beguiler, which is another Gish that I would totally love to play. Um, an armored dual or sword wielding mage. Super fun. Um, a history of the Zentarum and its founding and what happened with the Time of Troubles and uh, the Manchun Wars and all this other stuff. The Spell Plague. So really gives you like there's a reason that it's still around today and how it's evolved and changed from how it originally its original inception. Um, the people that are running it is kind of uh, a big part of this. So we have uh, Fazul Chembril, and so you'll get to know these big names that are in the Forgotten Realms novels or other campaigns that are making um, making an appearance here. Uh, I want to talk about Thieves' Cant. So they, they did a really good job of going through and having casual conversation, but what does that actually translate into and this is Thieves' Cant. So if I say, uh, aren't you a site for sore eyes? That literally means spy. Um, if I say, hey, boo, that means assassin. Um, and then you go over here, and, and if we have a birthday coming up, I say, you, <laughs> you've done good work, and there's a reward for you. There's a birthday coming up. Just funny little interesting things. And then when you have your meal, you can, uh, the, what you're eating the appetizers kind of reflect certain meanings as well. And what this translates into is you could have an entire casual, this would take some planning, but you could have an entire casual conversation with some NPCs. Uh, and then when you leave, your rogue can come forward and be like, by the way, we need to go assassinate this king over here. Like, I understood all of it. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. And I like that a lot. There are some uh, sample conversations over here. So uh, the player character says, well, that depends on what you're serving to drink, my friend. And then the comment of that is, well, that depends on the pay. Your uh, Zentarum contact will say, well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. You're looking good. And that means that I'm the enforcer. Uh, so a lot of fun. And they put a lot of work into this. And I think it's, I think it's really cool. You can get a point across by bringing an appetizer out. Um, the area of Sunset Vale, and so we have um, the settlements there and then the factions. This supplement aims to have you be able to use existing 5e products within it. So uh, it has some information here on Cult of the Dragon, um, Eltigard, which is part of the Descent into Avernus campaign, um, the Harpers, the Red Wizards, how do these factions work in here? Uh, so that's good because you don't have to buy this and run this kind of a thing, but you could have your evil campaign and it still is having problems with uh, descent into Avernus or there are problems with out of the abyss and you want to take care of this. Icewind Dale, who knows? Uh, but I like this. You could use this and then kind of... Uh, Put it on top of the main adventure if you want. Um, this is just a fun cutaway of Darkhold Castle. So the stronghold of the Zentarum and kind of get a, an idea of all the different places that you can go. And um, I like this. I thought this was really cool. Uh, and and it's fun to be able to show players later on if they ever see this. But an aerial view, that's really fun too. This section is on creating evil characters and having an evil campaign. 
Um, and it sets up safety rules and things like that, which I think are important, especially when running a evil campaign with evil characters. And what does it mean to be an evil character as opposed to uh, like a psychotic person that goes out to, I don't know. I, I always think like if you're playing an evil character, you're probably very like uh, self-preservation rather than um somebody else's preservation but this they do a good job of explaining a lot of this a lot of thought went into this and that in the end it can be fun to have this type of play style if you want to do this and put in the work um magic items i like this a lot the body bag of holding that was one of my favorites one of the new spells that they have in here that i really liked was manchun's mage hand which is a cantrip uh and it's straight up a um force grip like around someone's neck and i just thought that was really fun magnetize also another fun spell so again uh that was dark hold secrets of the zentarum 15 dollars pdf uh rashman campaign guide which is 20 dollars, but you can get the pdf soft cover for 35 which is probably the best deal calumshan adventures guide eight dollars really good deal and the border kingdoms is 15 bucks or 40 dollars for the soft cover um, these are all very Forgotten Realm centric, so I don't expect a lot of you to be super invested in it if you're not interested in the realms or wanting to run a very specific Forgotten Realms game. But if you are interested in that kind of stuff, this is fun. And, and the fact that Ed Greenwood worked on so many of these as well is pretty awesome. The DMs Guild has given us a way for those authors like Keith Baker and Ed Greenwood to continue contributing to these worlds uh, and make money from it because I think before if they weren't asked to make anything for Eberron or for the Forgotten Realms then they weren't and they don't own it anymore so it's kind of interesting. So let me know what you guys think and I would be curious if there are other things that you want me to review in the future. Um, again uh, use that code for 5% off, which is Harold Jorfton 5 when you go to check out. Um, there are affiliate links down below if you are interested in checking any or all of these out. Um, I will, I'm hoping to do more of these reviews again. I kind of like these themed ones where I can review like four at a time, uh, kind of like I did with the Feywild. So if you like that, let me know. If you like it individually, let me know that. We can always do that again. Um, here's a playlist of more DMs Guild stuff that I really enjoy. You can check it out there. And uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care.